In the latest issue of PES Wind, which you can find online, just search for PES Wind using your Google engine. Uh, there's a number of great articles, and you, you need to go there, and you need to download this quarter's uh, magazine. And, and Joel, there's a really interesting article from uh, Gobi Consultants about seabeds and the cabling that happens on the seabeds and all the difficulty of putting cables on the seafloor. You always think, I do, as an electrical engineer, like it's a cable. Just drop it on the seafloor. And maybe put a couple of rocks on it to keep it from floating away, and you should be good. But it's a lot more difficult than that. Well, there's multiple phases of it, too, right? So you have to do complete seabed site characterization. So you have to understand what the surface layout is. But then, okay, that surface layout, what is it composed of? Because some of this cable is going to sink into the silt, into the mud. Is there rocks down there? Is there rocks underneath the silt that when you lay it down, it could, could cut it? Is there currents where it's going to move it around? Is that a problem? When people think, ah, oh, it's cable layout just laid on the seafloor, it's not, it's not simple. Um, and you, with, I'm just, we're just talking about site characterization. We haven't talked about the actual operation of laying it or even loading it onshore, loading it offshore, because even at that level, a lot of damage to cables happens just during the manufacturing and loadout process because it is so difficult. Uh, specialized vessels, specialized technicians and people doing it. You pull on it too hard, it breaks. You push on it too hard, it breaks. You let it bend too much, it's junk. It's very, very, very difficult to lay cables correctly. And if you remember, Alan, I think it was in 2021, there was a like a $1 billion, like a nine-figure insurance case about cable lay in the North Sea on a big wind farm. Well, the article does say that 75% of cable problems are man-made. Fishing and anchors. And as we had seen, was it, was it late last year, a couple of anchor drops where their anchors were drug on purpose. There's going to be a lot more concern about that now and how those uh, power cables are covered or buried. I, I guess pretty much uh, wasn't the EU pushing to bury all the cables, particularly around the UK? Yeah, there's, there's I mean, there's it's difficult in the UK too because there's trenching machines, right? So you have trenching machines that can trench things really easily into silt, mud, and, that, and those kind of loose sediments. However, if you've ever been on some of these landing spots, like say like the Scottish coast, like it's all rock, right? So now you have a landing problem, you know? So you can, you can bury, you can cover with concrete mattresses. You can do rock bags. You can do all kinds of great stuff. You can also bury it a couple of meters down with a trenching machine, but then there's the approaches and the, the currents offshore that will unbury them and things. It's very difficult to get it correct. Yeah, it, it you need to go check out this article because it, it lays out all the issues with protecting cables. And you can see this in PES Wind. So just go on to Google and look up PESWind.com and read the article. Very good. And, and nice job by Gobi, by the way. Uh, I didn't know some of the things... I've learned a lot from Joel over the last year or two as he explains this to me very slowly, but this article was full of great details. As wind energy professionals, staying informed is crucial and let's face it, difficult. That's why the Uptime Podcast recommends PES Wind Magazine. PES Wind offers a diverse range of in-depth articles and expert insights that dive into the most pressing issues facing our energy future. Whether you're an industry veteran or new to wind, PES Wind has the high quality content you need. Don't miss out. Visit PESWind.com today.